today I am canning some chickpeas. I had started with five pounds that I washed and sorted and I soaked them overnight. You will notice with chickpeas as with dal and lentils, there is a bit of an odor, but it goes away after rinsing and cooking. If anyone cans it, they're horrified at first. They're like, is there something wrong with it? No, that's just, that's just the nature of a chickpea. They say to fill it to an inch. I go below that. I'm more about an, an inch and a half to two below. And I, what I'm going to do is I've got my lids boiling, which I will turn on now. I'm going to add a quarter teaspoon of canning salt. I'm going to add a half a smash of garlic and I'm going to add one teaspoon of lime because most of the dishes we have, we use these in salads or in a curry dish and that's just fine. These are the chickpeas I soaked. They are five pounds. They're tiny when you first look at them, but they really do double in size when they soak. I'm doing this exact same way I've done the other beans where I'm going to fill these jars. I'm going to put in a few seasonings of my choice. This is optional. It's not a have to. It's just what I'm preferring. I'm going to fill it with the cooking water. This water was fresh when I boiled these chickpeas for 30 minutes after they soaked overnight. And then I'm going to put it in my canner, bring it up to pressure, and I'm going to pressure cook these in a pressure canner for 75 minutes. In filling these, I did use more of an eighth of a teaspoon of salt, and that is really optional. That was just for seasonings, because mostly what we use these on is we drain them. We'll use them in salads. Sometimes I'll grind it for hummus. Tonight I'm making a curried chickpea and salad. And so a little bit of salt, just a Midge, just a pinch to take it off of the blank, the bottom is what we need. And I use garlic because we grow garlic and we have abundance of garlic. And I just put in a, about a half of a smash garlic for seed flavoring. And then I put in about three quarters of a tablespoon of lime juice because I had it and it just adds a little brightness. Most of these will get drained and then proceeded to use in any manner that I want to use them in. So I'm going to get these lids wiped and put them in the canner. And the reason why I've got wide mouth, I typically like to do um, 18 jars of small mouth. It's because in meal prep last week, that's what I had upstairs and I was too lazy to go downstairs and get more small mouth. And again, as usual, we just want Finger tight till you feel the resistance and then we stop. I have my canner loaded. It is double stacked. And now I'm going to bring this up to temperature. And once I exhaust the valve for a solid 10 minutes, once it's at a full jiggler on, and bring it up to 15 pounds of pressure because that is my, and as usual, my leftovers will go into the freezer they will be dated. And I used leftover Great Northern beans last night in the white bean chicken chili soup. I have a little bit left in the kettle that I'm gonna use for dinner tonight. All 17 jars of chickpeas canned from yesterday. Complete success. And while I fill the peas up to the shoulder, I put the water up to the rim and you can see how much it absorbed the liquid. There is no siphoning in the canner. One of my favorite things to do is to make a curried chickpea where I use coconut cream. I put in some carrots, some diced tomato, a little uh, chicken, and I have a, probably about six different seasonings I put in. That's just one of them. And I've got fresh bread going to have with that today. So that was yesterday's canning. 
I'm done with chickpeas. I'm making some sourdough bacon. I got this recipe from Grains in Small Places and I will add a link to her website. I think it's wonderful. This is fresh milled and sourdough. I've never made it before, so we're gonna give her a try. She makes four minutes, so that's what I'm gonna do. I do have some einkorn flour, which she prefers for putting it on. So I am going to use that. I've made a few of her recipes with great success. I've got a few of my own that I've converted, and I certainly appreciate all her hard work. So again, this is baguette. And I'm going to try and take this out without deflating it, like she had recommended. It feels wonderful so far. And I'm going to divide this into four. Now she just kind of rolls it to get some tension going. I'm going to take her advice on that. She had her shaped at a point. I like mine more rounded. Everybody has different techniques, so I am just going to preset this, keeping the tension here, like so. I have squeezed out too much of the flour. Keep a little extra in this one too. And I will come back in about 15 minutes and re-give these some tension. Now this is not something she did, but it's something I'm doing with my pan. I did put a smidge of semolina on there just to dust it. It's a habit of mine. I'm gonna put these baguettes on. They are kind of flattening a little bit, but I want to give them tension on the paper. Put that one is spreading out so that I don't deflate it when I move it. And again, I've never done this recipe before and I could feel the semolina on the bottom is not allowing it to stick to itself to rise, so that's maybe a bad point against putting semolina. You can see how much this one has spread flat compared to this one. And again, the semolina made it so when I try and squeeze the ends together, they don't stick. So I would not recommend doing that, is, especially if you're going to try and keep these to a rounded shape on top. I'm going to put my plastic back on, let them rest while my oven is heating. I do have a pan of water in my oven. Again, I would watch her video for technique. I'm a bit of a ramrod in the kitchen and really don't like cameras on, so I have a real hard time doing stuff with a camera on, and I'm not always explaining all the techniques, but she's very good. So this recipe is very similar to Sue Becker's French bread, and it didn't rise as much as I would have liked, but I've been really struggling with um, sourdough fresh milled breads. I can do sourdough beautifully with a store-bought dead flour. I can do really lovely bread loaves with fresh milk flour, but combining the two, it's been a struggle. And I think these are done. They still feel a little soft on the bottom, and you can see where the seam is from where I was trying to give it some life. And these are... I'm hoping will be tasty. Ooh, hot. Hoping will be tasty. They're just not as pretty as I would have liked, but that's okay. It's just a experiment. Have fun with your experiments. I'm putting it back on a hot pan to see if that can crisp up some of the bottom. I'm also struggling with my oven. It will not heat over 350, so it's a constant watching over it, trying to keep it hot, which sourdough needs a nice hot oven. And so there we go. Check out Grains in Small Places. She's wonderful. And Sue Becker at Bread Becker's. So these are gonna be for supper tonight, but I just wanted to try one. They look good. And again, I would not use semolina on the bottom because when I was trying to give it 
some tension. I couldn't get the bottoms to stick to each other. It's really crispy. I'm putting it on the broiler on the last minute. I don't know if that was such a good idea or not. Looks good. Tastes wonderful. This will be what's for supper with our curry. Baguette is just a fancy French word for skinny loaf, I think. And this is how I like to have it with a little olive oil, pinch of salt and pepper. That is good eating.